Hello again. Thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, we're, today we're going to be talking about inspecting your 6.0 liter injectors. We're going to talk about troubleshooting and things to look for and hopefully this information will help you with your with your own vehicle or whatever trucks in your shop. So in this video we're going to be discussing the common symptoms that your truck would exhibit uh, when you have a bad injector. And then we'll talk about proper removal and installation procedures and also inspecting your injectors to make sure they are in fact bad because you don't want to needlessly spend time and energy and of course money uh, without being assured that you're going to fix your problem. So we all know diesels are powerful. That's why we use them in our day-to-day -day life, in our businesses, because they give us the power we need to get the job done. But uh, along with that power comes responsibility, and that's the responsibility of properly maintaining our vehicles so they can operate at maximum efficiency. Here at Diesel Care, we've been manufacturing injectors for over 15 years, and I'd like to share with you some of the common failures that we see from injectors that have failed in the field. So before we discuss the common symptoms of a faulty fuel injector in a six liter, uh, I want to just share with you one of the most common questions I get asked is, at what mileage should I start to be worried about my fuel system? And that's a very good question. Uh, generally speaking, we tell customers that if you're above 200,000 miles on your odometer, it start to th it's time to start thinking about uh, changing out injectors as part of preventative maintenance. Um, if you get above 250, I tell customers the same thing. You've had a good run, but that's no longer a dependable vehicle. So anywhere between 2 and 250 is kind of your sweet spot for changing out your injectors. So we talked about the, the mileage area where you may anticipate a failure. The next question we get asked are, what are some common symptoms that I have a bad injector? And while there are multiple uh, symptoms um, that can occur, uh, everything from low fuel economy to a uh, smoking issue, be it black, white, or gray, even smelling diesel fuel in the cab can indicate some compromised issues in the fuel system. But the two most common uh, are a hard to start, no start condition, or an uneven, uneven idle, or a misfire. And uh, we're going to give you some uh, real straightforward things that you can do at home without having to take your vehicle to the dealership uh, to determine that you do, in fact, have a bad injector. So the, um, at this point, a lot of people will choose to just take their vehicle to the dealer, pay a couple hundred bucks to have it scanned and turned over to them. Um, and God bless those people for doing that. Uh, there are those of us out there who like to do our work ourselves, and, and we want to do as much investigating as we can. And so a simple method that we have uh, found and we give out to our um, customers is to do a simple temperature test. Now, what you're going to need for this is a laser-pointed uh, uh, temp gun. Uh, they're available at most any auto parts store, typically for under $20. And what I recommend to customers to do is get you a legal pad, piece of paper, get you a pencil, and have your engine perfectly cold. And this whole process is going to take about 15 minutes, so you want to clear out a block of time, you want to crank the vehicle, and you want to take that laser gun and shoot it at the manifold ports, just one at a time. And then you want to record those readings. And you want to do it about every minute and a half to every two minutes. So at the end of this, you should have between 12 and 15 entries. And you'll see uh, as it kind of graphed itself out which injectors are not uh, living up to the standard. Um, and that's the injectors you want to focus on. Anything that is out of parameter, be it an injector that is firing too hot, uh, where the temperature obviously is coming up too quick, or one t more typical that it's very slow coming in. And that'll allow you to isolate uh, how many injectors you may have faulty, uh, and it'll, it'll kind of jumpstart your troubleshooting. Okay, before we get into removing the injector, I, I just want to thank you guys for uh, clicking this video and watching it. If you have uh, any questions about this or future upcoming videos, please uh, comment in the section below. So let's talk about how to get those injectors out of your truck. 
Okay, so for a step-by-step -step, uh, removal and installation guide, you can click on the link in the description below, and uh, that'll be posted on our website. But I did want to mention a, a, a couple of things that are pretty important when you're doing this, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Um, first off, when you remove an injector and that system opens up, the gravity will cause the fuel to go into that cylinder. Now, that's important for two reasons. One, uh, if you didn't get that fluid out and you tried to start the vehicle, you could hydrolock your engine and it would cause damage to your push rods and, and valve train. Um, so you want to have a means of vacating that uh, fuel out of the cylinder. Uh, there are some expensive tools out there for that. Uh, it can be something as simple as a squeeze bottle with a piece of hose. But you want to make sure that you get that fuel out. And of course, you want to pick a cylinder that's easily accessible because you're going to have to spend a little extra time and energy with it. Um, the second thing that uh, I do want to mention is you are dealing with uh, a 48 volt system, so you want to make sure your batteries are disconnected and that you have um, uh, that you're just doing safe mechanics. Um, again, for a detailed step-by-step -step guide, uh, click on the link in the description below. And if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to us at 1-800-961-9290. Or you can always go to our uh, website, which is dieselcare.store. So now that you've got your injector removed, what are some of the things you're going to need to look for? Uh, and I'll give you the most common things. And um, the first thing that you want to inspect is your wiring looms. Um, you're going to be looking for any wiring that is compromised, pierced, burnt, broken, that sort of thing. Um, you want to look at the pins in the end of the connectors to make sure that they've not been bent or broken or compromised. Um, this injector that came uh, core from a customer, we determined its failure was this earmuff had gotten loose, and that's what caused this injector to fail, uh, which is also a common uh, failure point. Uh, these screws, um, very important to look for them. They have a tendency to break due to the high pressures. Uh, obviously, if a screw's not here, you want to find out where it is because it's m most likely somewhere down uh, on top of your head. So uh, you want to look for that. Uh, you also want to look at the O-rings around the fuel gallery to make sure that uh, they've not been compromised in some way. Uh, you want to look for your bottom compression gasket, number one, to make sure it's there. Uh, and number two, you want to make sure that it's uh, not faulty. You're going to replace that anyway, but if it's faulty, a lot of times you'll see carbon that goes up this lower nozzle cone, and that can be indicative of this copper gasket failing, the cup failing, and or the hold down failing. Um, so when you're visually inspecting it starting from the top and working down you want to look for electrical you want to look for the screws uh, the earmuffs that they're uh, on there properly the o-rings and then of course the nozzle cone uh, and the compression gasket at the bottom the last thing you would look for is the very tip of the injector now a uh, couple points here you never use a wire wheel a steel wire wheel on a nozzle um, the wire wheel that are made of steel will actually close the nozzle and render the injector useless. You can, however, use a brass brush or a brass wire wheel if you want to clean these to inspect for cracks or any deficiencies. Um, anything that uh, looks odd or different generally means that it, that injector nozzle has probably been damaged. So replacing an injector may seem like a, a, a very expensive proposition, uh, but literally, folks, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what can happen through progressive damage if you don't uh, address a faulty injector. Things such as um, piston failures due to overfueling. Uh, we've had instances where nozzle tips break off and they damage the block. Um, and these small failures uh, can end up costing ten or fifteen thousand dollars. So, when you determine that you have a, a bad injector, you want to exchange this uh, with this. 
Um, this is a completely remanufactured injector from Diesel Care. Uh, and point out a few things that uh, uh, I think make it one of the best injectors on the market. One is we use a new uh, wire loom uh, that is OE uh, on all injectors. Uh, it is the latest design. Uh, it has what's called the stiction notch, uh, which allows for uh, improved uh, starting in cold conditions. Um, it has uh, a new spool valve, which is this upper piece right here. Um, that is the single biggest difference in our injectors from most of our competitors that are out there, is this new spool valve. And uh, we're proud of the quality of the injectors we put out. And um, this can, over time, save you a lot of money uh, over not changing them out. Comes with everything you need to install it, uh, your O-rings and your copper gaskets. Um, we also have an option that's available with our new injectors uh, with a higher horsepower nozzle. Uh, we can increase your horsepower uh, by 40, 70, or 100 horsepower. And you can uh, reach out to our sales department uh, at 800-961-9290 or on our website, dieselcare.store for more details. Um, but replacing this from this can save you thousands of dollars over the life of your vehicle. So we've talked about uh, symptoms of a faulty injector and uh, how to remove and reinstall it. Uh, we have a step-by-step -step, uh, link uh, in the description below. Uh, a couple of things, anytime you pull injectors out, even if you're just doing simple maintenance, you never want to reuse the O-rings and the compression gaskets. Uh, here at Diesel Care, we have a, um, a kit that you can purchase. Um, we also have a kit for a full set that includes uh, your O-rings for your oil rail. Uh, that's available as well at our website, dieselcare.store. And if you have any questions uh, about anything we've discussed here or, or you just want to talk about your truck, uh, we're available uh, during business hours at 1-800-961-9290. Guys, thanks so much for clicking this video. We really appreciate uh, you guys out there in the diesel community. We're here to service you. And uh, again, we appreciate uh, you taking the time to watch this. So in closing, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, clicking on this video. We hope it was helpful to you. Um, if there's any way we can improve it, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and we'd like to hear uh, suggestions for your, our next video. Uh, so you can subscribe and follow us by clicking, uh, what do they click? The link. Oh, the link. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do that again. Go ahead.